Welcome to the Ultralight Airplane Workshop. My name is Leon. In this video, we're going to talk about the maneuvering flight envelope for the UWS-1 Ultralight Airplane that we are designing. First, I'd like to thank Richard and Keith for being fantastic supporters of the channel on Patreon. When the channel reaches 500 subscribers, we'll do a t-shirt giveaway. And hopefully that'll happen later this month or early next month. So look forward to that. I'm getting ready to start doing some aerodynamic load analysis on the rudder and vertical tail of the UWS-1 Ultralight. In order to do that, I need to know what my VA speed is, which is a minimum maneuvering speed, and I need to know what the dive speed is for the airplane. Well, those are speeds you generally get when you calculate the flight envelope for the airplane. So in this video, I decided let's go ahead and calculate that flight envelope, and then we can start working on the aerodynamic loads on the vertical tail. In case you're new to the channel and you're not familiar with the design of the UWS-1 Ultralight, I will put a link up here in the upper right hand corner that you can go to and that'll be a playlist of all the videos that I've made for the design of the Ultralight. In addition, if you're not familiar with the aerodynamic terms I'm going to use in this video, I'll put another link up here in the upper right hand corner that is linked to another playlist covering videos I've made about aerodynamic terms. And I'll sprinkle a few links to specific videos as I mentioned some of the terms throughout this video. Now let's get to it. When we're talking about the flight envelope of an airplane, we're talking about the speeds and loads on the airplane where it can fly safely without having a structural failure. There are two general categories of flight envelope we can talk about and sometimes they're combined together. One is the maneuvering flight envelope and one is the gust factor flight envelope. For this video, we're not going to worry about the gust factor. I may come back to that at some future time and talk about it. To keep this video a little bit simpler, we are only going to talk about the maneuvering flight envelope. Oh, on the right hand side, I'm really depicting a general appearance of a flight envelope. At the moment, this is not specific to any airplane. On the left hand side, we have something called the load factor. And it's depicted by a small letter N. This is generally measured in G's, so gravities. So one would be regular normal gravity, just sitting in your chair gravity. And then of course it increases as you're pulling a load on the airplane. So as you're pulling back on the stick, particularly coming out of a dive, you'll be pulling more G's. On the higher side of this horizontal line, this is a positive load factor. In other words, as you're pulling back on the stick, it's going to make you feel a little bit heavier. Now right around in here is going to be the 1G. So if you're between 1G and 0, you're going to feel lighter in your seat. Below this horizontal line is going to be the negative factor. So if you were flying upside down in level flight, you would be feeling negative Gs. Your seat belt would have to be holding you into your seat because you'd be pulling against the seat belt. This horizontal line is 0G. Along this horizontal line, you have speed. Over here at this vertical line is zero, and then it increases linearly as you move to the right. Some of the symbols we're gonna talk about as we go along in this video are VS. VS is a stall speed. This is the speed that the airplane will stall at in its clean configuration, its normal flight configuration. In other words, the flaps are fully retracted, your gears are fully retracted, of course, on ultralights, we don't normally have retractable gear. But anyway, we're talking about the clean flight configuration where the airplane will stall. Minimum flight speed for the airplane. So VA is the maneuvering speed. And it's related to the maximum load factor for your airplane. So let's say you designed your airplane to have a load factor of 4. Just throwing that out there, you don't normally have 4. There's generally standard values, but let's just say 4. And that's what this line here represents, which would be 4G. VA is the speed where when you pull back on your stick and you get the maximum coefficient of lift out of your wing, the lift generated by the wing matches the load factor times the weight of the airplane. If you happen to go any faster than that and you hit the maximum coefficient lift of the wing, you're actually exceeding that load factor. So this line would go on up. So let's say you're moving at about this speed right in here and you hit the maximum coefficient of lift of the wing, then that lift would be exceeding the load factor times the weight of the airplane. 
So if you design your airplane to that four load factor, you're very likely to damage the airplane. So VA is at speed where if you're at VA or less, the airplane will stall before you exceed the load factor of the airplane. If you're going faster than VA, you can actually damage the airplane if you try to go to the maximum coefficient of lift. So if you're going faster than this maneuvering speed, you have to be careful and not pull too hard on the stick or push too hard on the stick because down here would be the negative load factor. So if you push down too hard on the stick or let's say you're flying upside down and then push forward on the stick to climb, then you can come down here in the negative area and you can actually exceed the load limit in the negative area. Now for this video, I'm not going to calculate what VA is in the negative area. I don't intend to operate in that area and it shouldn't be a significant consideration. I will design the airplane to have a specific load factor in the negative area. I'm not going to bother calculating what that maneuvering speed is because I don't tend to be in that operating range. V sub D then is the maximum allowed dive speed. Let's say you're diving down, but you're not pushing forward on the stick or pulling back. You could actually be down here at 1G and diving down at a very steep angle. But you're still going to have significant aerodynamic forces on the wing. Just the pressure on the wing from straight ahead is going to try to pull the wings backward or pull the tail backward, straight backward. And so you've got to design your airplane to be able to handle that pressure. And so V sub D says, well, how fast can I go before that pressure pushing back on the wing or the tail is going to cause me structural issues? So it's V sub D is how fast you can go before you start having that kind of structural issue. In this slide, I'm going to talk about some of the design parameters or requirements that we've come up with on previous design videos of the UWS-1 Ultralight. The maximum coefficient lift when we're in the clean configuration, the flaps not deployed, we came up with 1.275. And that was from the video, final question mark, wing configuration. Of course, we talked about a whole lot of other things, particularly when the flaps are deployed. But one of the things we want to know is what the maximum coefficient lift was when we were in the clean configuration. That was 1.275. And we're going to need that when we're doing these calculations here. The surface area that we came up with was 90.2 square feet. In a few videos, I actually called it uh, 90.5, and I think even in one, I called it 91.5. But I'm really going to be using 90.2 square feet. And again, that was in the same video, uh, final wind configuration. The maximum weight we came up with for the airplane was 548 pounds. And that came from the video where I was talking about the first center of gravity estimate. And that is with the, of course, the empty weight of 254 pounds from part 103, a pilot weight of 250 pounds, whereas a standard pilot is 170 pounds, but I was going to go with the maximum pilot weight of 250, a parachute allowance of 24 pounds, and 20 pounds of baggage. That could be things like headphones and seat cushions and maps and water and whatever else that a pilot might want to take with them. I decided on an end factor of 3.8 G in the positive direction and minus 1.52 G in the negative direction. And this is called the standard category for G limits. There are some other categories like utility where it's uh, plus 4.4 and aerobatic where the plus value is six. And in general, the negative value except for aerobatic is going to be either 1.4 or 1.5, the G value. I used 1.4, which is where that 1.52 came from. And these are actually based on some regulations that you'll find in the FA regulations part 23.337, a section A1, which is the positive G limit, and a section B1, which is the negative limit. I haven't mentioned those before in a video, or if I had, I can't remember where it was. So I thought I'd go ahead and lay them out here and specify where they came from. Well, now that we've specified some of these parameters, we can actually calculate our V values. And we needed these values in order to do it. So now here, let's calculate our V sub S or V sub A and V sub D. The stall speed is pretty easy. You should recognize what this equation is. This is our lift equation, except rearranged so that V sub S is over on the left-hand side. 
So WG is our weight, that's our 548 pounds. Rower is our air density, that's 0 0.00238. The surface area of our wing, 90.2 square feet. And our maximum coefficient of lift is that 1.275. Once you calculate all that out, it gives you 37.5 knots. Now I'm sure most of you will remember that the stall speed for part 103 is 24 knots. But that's with the standard pilot of 170 pounds. It doesn't include just about anything else except for the parachute allowance. And with my flaps deployed with 70% span flaps, we should still meet that 24 knots. But when we're all cleaned up and we have our heaviest weight, then the stall speed should be around 37.5 knots. And so that is this value here. For the maneuvering speed, you can come up with just about anything that you want if you have some valid reason for doing it. If you don't have some specific need for a specific maneuvering speed, there are some recommendations that you can use. I use the, oh, I've got this title mixed around a little bit. It's the Aerodynamics, Aeronautic, and Flight Mechanics book, second edition from McCormick. It's equation uh, 7.57 on page 397. You take the square root of your load limit and multiply it by your stall speed, and that gives you your, your maneuvering speed. So I decided to go ahead and go with that. So that's our 3.8G multiplied by our V sub S in feet per second, which is 63.3. And then converting it to knots, we get 73 knots. So our maneuvering speed is going to be 73.1 knots. So it's pretty easy to calculate. V sub D, the dive speed, you can also have some recommendations. Now you may have some specific dive speed you want to make. Maybe you have a specific application where you need to be able to dive the airplane fast, you can come up with your own dive speed specification. But if you don't have anything specific you need, again, you can come up with some recommendations. Now this time I got mine from a different book, which is from Holloman. It's Modern Aircraft Design, Equation 4.3 on page 56. And again, this is derived from FA Part 23, kind of like it was up here for the load limit. And Holloman basically got it from there. And it's very similar. Take your maximum load limit multiplied by your maximum weight divided by the surface area of your wing. Take the square root of all that, multiply it by 24. And that gives you your knots. So when I calculated all of that, it gave me a speed of 115 knots from a maximum dive speed. That's a little bit high. I don't think it really needs to be that high. I was initially off the top of my head, I was thinking about 100 knots or some, somewhere between 90 and 100. But I think 115 is fine. Well, that gives us our three V speeds that we had in our flight envelope diagram. So now let's redraw our diagram. Well, here's our diagram with a few more things in it. So here's our V sub S. Our stall speed, we're in the clean configuration at 37 and a half. Now remember our stall speed when we have our flaps fully deployed is down here at 24.0. At some point in the future, I may come up with a maneuver flight envelope with the flaps deployed. Uh, one of the things I'll have to come up with is what is the maximum speed I can have those flaps deployed, but uh, that'll be for a future time. Now naturally, when we're stalling, when we're straight in level flight or landing, it's going to be 1G, which is why this is at this 1G limit. Now this value increases following our lift equation. If you remember what the lift equation is, if you kind of rearrange it, the amount of lift is going to equal Q, which of course is our dynamic pressure, multiplied by our surface area and our coefficient of lift. So that equation then will give us this curve. Now, Remember again, like our 24 knots, our maximum level flight cruise speed is limited to 55 knots by part 103. So I stuck that in here and the cruise speed is V sub C. Now some airplanes will have a V sub C up in this area. So as you're flying along and not have any troubles, you know, you got nice smooth air, then you'll just cruise right along very happily. But if you start hitting bumps or you have to start maneuvering, you will generally then slow your speed down to at least V sub A so you don't actually overstress the airplane. Okay, and talking of V sub A, at our 3.8 G, we have our speed of 73.1 knots. And our dive speed out here is at 115.3 knots. Now that's all on the positive side. On the negative side, we'll have something similar, kind of almost mirroring what's on the top. 
Now you would expect the stall speed to be a little bit higher. That's because the angle of attack is negative, which basically means the wing is operating with negative camber. The camber is upside down. That means you're gonna have less lift than when you have a positive angle attack. With less lift, your stall speed is gonna be higher, which is why this value is up higher than this one. Now don't bother calculating it because I don't really care what it is. I don't intend to fly upside down close to the stall speed, especially when I'm close to the ground. So I don't see that there, there's really any need to bother calculating this. I also don't feel there's any need to calculate this V sub A for the negative value. But I do want to know what this negative limit is, which is 1.5 Gs. Now that I have my V sub A and V sub D values, I start calculating the structural load limits for my vertical and horizontal tails. And that's why I did this video because I want to be able to get these values before I can actually start working on those load limits. So the next design video we have on the UWS-1 Ultralight should be something to do with the aerodynamic loads on the vertical tail or the rudder. It'll probably be the overall vertical tail and then I'll start cutting it up into vertical stabilizer and rudder loads. So stay tuned.